Welcome to the discussion. My guests today are Alan Hill, the Director of the Office of Telecommunications at the General Services Administration, Howard Spira, the Chief Information Officer at the Export and Import Bank, Chez Sivagnanam, the Chief Enterprise Architect at the National Science Foundation, and Zain Ahmed, the Vice President and General Manager for Civilian Sales at CenturyLink. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Before we get started, let me set some context for our discussion today. Think about this for a second. If your email or video teleconferencing system or phones go down, even for five minutes or heaven forbid for an hour, what happens to your job? Does it come to a standstill? Do you have the documents on paper? The answer for the most obvious of questions for, is similar for all of us. First, it's what the heck? Then is I can't do anything. And then I didn't print out my documents. And then that's it, I'm going for a walk, I'm getting coffee, or these days as we all work from home, I'm taking a nap. That's because everything we do is based on our network. It has to work, it has to work consistently. In fact, the 2009 white paper from McKinsey says, there's ample evidence that the creative use of infrastructure has helped leading companies make themselves more efficient, redefine their business models, and improve their customer experience. 11 years later, this is truer than ever. Agencies need to modernize and transform their network to take advantage of emerging technologies, cloud applications, and improved security. That modernization and transformation, mainly through the Enterprise Infrastructure Solutions Program, or EIS, is starting to happen. As you hear probably from Alan Hill from GSA, agencies are starting to implement technologies like voice over IP at an accelerated rate, and some, a few, are starting to ask for software-defined networking capabilities. So what can agencies do to successfully transform and modernize their networks? What are the benefits and promises of moving to a software-defined wide area or SD-WAN setup? Well, that's where our panelists are gonna come in. Gentlemen, let me start with some basic, let me turn to Alan Hill to start. You're seeing the network modernization, the changes that are happening at the 50,000 foot view with, through the EIS program. What are some of those trends? What are you seeing from agencies as they're moving down this path of network modernization? So thank you, Jason. Appreciate the invite and uh, thank you, uh, CenturyLink for uh, sponsoring this uh, event on Federal News Network. Um, first, uh, starting at the high level, we're looking at GSA uh, facilitating IT modernization across federal government is a top priority at GSA. Uh, cloud and network infrastructure service uh, presents a great opportunity for GSA to guide customers as they modernize. Because of how rapid IT is changing, uh, we need to think about how IT is delivered in a more holistic fashion. Uh, we need to look at network uh, at how it's being delivered today and how it should be delivered to work with the cloud technologies. Um, applications don't work well outside the cloud because they're built on legacy architects that aren't efficient. Uh, this is why CIOs and business owners need to take business applications in their IT portfolio and look throughout the application rationalization process to determine what is necessary for them to operate in a more efficient uh, manner in the cloud. Uh, it is not, um, it, we need to build on key components of the cloud smart, uh, smart, the cloud smart framework, security, procurement, workforce, so they can help customers uh, answer the questions. What applications are actually being, uh, belong in the cloud? Uh, too often decisions are made to, to move to the cloud applications without fully understanding how the, it impacts the business uh, operations and value to the organization. Uh, that's why we uh, partner with OMB and the CIO Council produced the application rationalization playbook. It strongly encourages agencies to take a more holistic view of the cost of benefit and migrating applications from on-premise into different environments, including the business value, technical fit, and total cost of ownership. Uh, the network needs to be handled no different than the cloud and how it needs to be seamless across the environment. So in EIS, we're looking and how to make network to be operate in the same fashion that it does in the cloud. So what is how the network operates in the cloud? We need to take that out of the cloud and make it sure it goes all the way down to the end user and how uh, it uh, works. That's why software defined network becomes prominent. Tick 3.0, zero trust, all the types of security features that are built in the cloud, we need to extend that to our endpoints. Thank you, Jason. Now, Alan, one of the things you, you touched upon is this push and pull between the applications and the network. Uh, the network uh, is, has to operate in the same fashion as the cloud, you're saying, but at the same time, you gotta figure out which applications fit best. If you can, give me a sense of, or there's some trends you're starting to see among 
the solicitations, the fair opportunity solicitations that agencies are putting out there. Specifically, is there a, is there a desire to modernize the network beyond, uh, you know, we're just going to, you know, the, from networks to EIS, it's, you know, 10, 12, 15 years later, it's going to be better automatically? Uh, yes. So um, there, agencies are in different uh, maturity levels. Some agencies are re more ready to modernize, and uh, for example, software defined wide area network. Uh, because they have the right components in their infrastructure, they can move to a SD WAN type solution that would provide them the type of value and better management and more in line to the types of cloud technologies there. Other agencies may not have the right components in place, and that takes time to build on. So it's important to understand where those opportunities are to where you can build on now new technologies and where you may to converge things and build on. For example, you might have your voice and data separated right now, but you, you want to bring them together in a solution that where you get unified communication. Building that out, uh, the technical nuances of that takes time to build the right infrastructure so it supports a more modern, infra uh, modern uh, applications. Let me move over to uh, Howard and, and from the Export Import Bank. You're at the next level down. Alan's seen it from the 50,000 foot view, if you will. W how are you at the Export Import Bank starting to address that network uh, transformation modernization? Sure. Well, I think um, that network uh, modernization is uh, part and parcel of our journey to the cloud. If I look at uh, today, sort of the complexity of stitching together uh, on-prem infrastructure uh, various cloud services, whether it's uh, software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service, uh, government shared uh, services, and now that we're uh, managing our way through uh, the uh, pandemic, uh, the basically a distributed, you know, 100% distributed workforce, um, the uh, the stitching together that that uh, uh, that network is. Um, uh, is more important uh, than ever and ensuring that we have the tools to do that in a way that is uh, allows us to be uh, agile and 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 uh, and quick in our response to manage uh, that complexity to be able to uh, monitor and 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 quickly tune uh, uh, our network and ensure that that we're uh, securing this uh, uh, I'll, I'll call it this more complex uh, enterprise is something that we're very uh, uh, that we're very focused on. Uh, the Export Import Bank of the United States is a relatively simple uh, entity from a network perspective, but even as a simple uh, uh, entity, it's it's um, uh, impressive to me in sort of a cloud uh, environment of uh, all the different services that we're stitching together, and then uh, as I mentioned uh, today, trying to deliver to uh, to every employee at their home. You make an interesting point that even for a, a, an agency that's on the smaller side, it's still a very complex uh, network in, in many ways. You guys are in a hybrid environment, I imagine? Uh, yeah, I would say um, right now we have about uh, between 70 and 80 percent of our uh, IT infrastructure is in some kind of uh, uh, the cloud. Um, and then we have a relatively small on-prem um, uh, footprint, but even the on-prem uh, footprint is fully virtualized. And so um, while we may not be overly focused on, uh, on the WAN side of the house, uh, the use of, uh, of uh, software defined networks is incredibly important to us uh, for um, the management of that on-prem network and within our cloud uh, infrastructure as a service um, uh, um, capabilities. Uh, w with respect to, uh, like I said, the the, uh, the speed and agility with which we uh, uh, set up um, uh, very secure, very responsive, uh, easy to monitor uh, 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 networks. So we utilize all the uh, all of the technology, and and um, if we didn't have that technology, I don't think we could manage the current state of complexity. I think that's a point I'm hearing time and again from a lot of uh, chief information officers and other people in the in the federal IT world that uh, the 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 move, even the small move for you guys, uh, whomever, whichever agency is really making a difference today. Uh, and and let, let me bring in uh, Ches from the National Science Foundation. You all also have made a big move to the cloud. You guys have uh, have been using um, 
cloud infrastructure for some time. But what is what about what does your network modernization look like? What path are you on? Good morning, and thank you for inviting to this great panel here. Um, so let me start with uh, National Science Foundation. Our mission is to provide the base infrastructure to advance science research in the nation. Um, and then we are a single mission agency. Uh, our IT is also mission focused. So let me start saying that we are not uh, looking at modernizing your network just because we have to do a network modernization. It has to be aligning with our mission and our vision and how we are helping the community serving the best uh, service uh, to promote the science research. So from that angle, uh, so two years ago, um, you know, if you look at our infrastructure, it was mostly confined to the headquarters and we had a data center running uh, in the headquarters providing all ID services. Then immediately we saw the broader need of uh, enabling with uh, new capabilities such as uh, uh, AI or machine learning or advanced collaboration tools. Um, you know, the situation we are here today, actually we are one of the top agencies uh, providing this, uh, um, you know, classic uh, uh, remote work feasible facility. So all these would not have been possible if we uh, haven't adopted cloud. And when, we, when I say cloud, uh, initially our focus was just looking at one cloud and then we quickly realized not one cloud provider is going to meet all our needs and we have to set up this um, you know multi-cloud architecture so we can uh, use uh, our, our uh, uh, take advantage of these services provided by these uh, providers uh, on an on-demand basis. So um, to set up this multi-cloud uh, environment, and obviously if you look at the uh, fundamentals of uh, federal government cybersecurity and uh, infrastructure, it is all mostly network centric. So we have to make sure we have a robust advanced network to really make this uh, capability available to our IT. So, um, so we added this cross-connect architectures, um, which uh, uh, kind of helps fosters that uh, capability of uh, enabling multi-cloud uh, or um, cloud providers on demand basis. And also, uh, we, it also helps uh, us move data and services uh, between the cloud providers and on an on-demand basis. So, so this is the architecture we uh, have developed in the past two years. And uh, the network modernization fits in the right in the middle of this architecture, right? So we have to have a uh, you know high-speed connection. We want to make sure it's secure and also uh, have controls of adding and uh, and turning on and off the cloud providers on an unneeded basis. So uh, the EIS fits uh, right in the middle of this, and uh, our partners have been very helpful. You know, the, we have enabled uh, the, for example, the direct connect or uh, I know still we are, uh, we are still on TIC 2.0. We, we are looking to move to TIC 3.0 at some point, but uh, all the TIC 2.0, the uh, hosting of the cross-connect architecture, everything is part of the EIS uh, capabilities. So, so that's where we are uh, today and we look forward moving in this direction. And also at some point, we want to take advantage of the TIC 3.0 and uh, be even, be, it, that helps us even being more resilient uh, to adding more cloud providers and bringing new capabilities to the foundation in advancement of the research. You mentioned about the, the network making this all possible. Have you had to make changes? Have you, have you it's been on a journey to, to make sure your network can handle the multi-cloud approach, can handle uh, the remote work capabilities. Are there specific steps you've taken over the last year or two to ensure that network is, is in, in tip top shape? Yes, um, so when we started um, our cloud uh, migration efforts, uh, it all started with a VPN. We know that is not enough. So and obviously in the past years, we have uh, worked on establishing a fiber connection and also run fiber connection from our headquarters to the cross-connect facility. Uh, and then we also started working with our uh, uh, EIS vendor to really um, you know, build this uh, co-located facility where the cross-connect uh, capabilities could be built on. So all these have been done in the past uh, couple of years and we are still expanding further uh, and adding more capabilities uh, uh, to specifically add uh, newer cloud providers. Um, so this is uh, so something which we have achieved in the past two years. 
All right, great, great news there. Obviously, I talked to your CIO, Dorothy Aronson, just recently, and there's a lot of good news happening at NSF. Uh, let's bring in Zane from CenturyLink. Let's first ask you, what are you seeing from your customers these days around network modernization? And then maybe we could ask you to react a little bit to what everyone's been saying. Yeah, thanks, Jason. Um, so I'll take kind of two parts of it. First part is how we're seeing as, as a macro uh, world dynamically changing and uh, responding to COVID-19, the digital interactions have gone up. Uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, stress put on the network itself. Um, and you're not just on the core of the network. I think that scales a lot easier. Uh, you're seeing the distributed ends show up uh, very differently. Your, your towers are, are getting jammed with um, concurrent calls coming through and data getting used that way. So um, we're seeing a lot of that. We've scaled our network accordingly uh, and continue to do that as we see demand show up in different areas of the country and globally as well. Um, but then more at, at the micro level from a government perspective, um, we've um, almost provided 200 gigs of internet traffic, upgraded our customers within just the healthcare uh, uh, vertical itself. And that happened um, uh, within either four hours or two hours of getting us the order, or sometimes not even having the order to respond to the um, uh, COVID-19 initiatives that um, the government has across the board. And that's where owning your own network becomes really important and being able to control your destiny and being able to respond to as the mission evolves for uh, different agencies, being, being there for them and being responsive around it. Uh, we've even, um, as being a good corporate citizen, um, wherever we're on net and our facilities are there fiber wise, are offering free uh, services um, to any temporary medical services or hospitals being set up. Um, just to provide that uh, ongoing support. Uh, we even uh, provide that for the U.S. Navy ship Mercy uh, in Los Angeles. So we'll continue to do that and continue to evolve. So our network is in great shape uh, and continues to scale. We're just about out of time for this segment, but I just want to get one quick follow-up on. As you talk to agencies and, and as you see with their reaction to with this coronavirus pandemic and, and having more and more uh, employees work from home, are, are they did some network stress tests before the, the maximized telework order came down. Uh, that, uh, what I've heard from agency CIOs and federal CIOs, Suzanne Kent, really made a big difference. And, and vendors like yourself, like CenturyLink, really responded quickly. What was the reaction? What, was, what did you hear from your customers during that stress test? Like, was there a lot of, oh my, you better come help me now? Or was it more like, oh, we're not in bad shape. We just need to tweak here, tweak there. And I know you can't blanket everybody, but what were some of the things? I think, uh, in my opinion, COVID-19 will be responsible for a lot of uh, IT modernization efforts um, directly because um, people are getting forced to live differently, react differently, interact differently, and uh, the stress caused a lot of panic. And that showed up uh, with customers asking for bandwidth tomorrow or in a couple hours. And, um, and that, that reaction um, and having alignment all across the board, Suzette was calling um, Dave Young, uh, uh, our president uh, for federal, right? So uh, for public sector rather. So getting things aligned to make sure uh, everybody is working in this, the same kind of direction and prioritizing things, um, it helps uh, react to our customers better and serve their mission. Um, so we were able to react through and work with them. I think we're in a very better, we're in a much better position today from that perspective and showing up um, and responding to all the diverse uh, workforce that's coming back into the mothership for data or interactions um, in, um, and having those conversations. Excellent. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we can continue our conversation about network modernization. You're listening to the panel discussion, Modernizing Federal Networks, sponsored by CenturyLink on Federal News Network. <laughs> 